everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. It's a fresh start throughout the league here in week one as these two teams have high hopes for the season ahead. It's the Colts going up against the Saints. The opening kick of the new season is straight ahead as we turn it over to our broadcast duo of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From a city that's played host to 10 Super Bowls, here's a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. Tonight, it's the Sunday night opener for the new NFL season between the Indianapolis Colts and the New Orleans Saints. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Saints team as they interplay. An early season tilt, and when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet, and both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. Meanwhile, for the visiting Colts, and I don't think from what we saw down on the field before the game, there's any doubt they're ready to roll. They pass the eye test, don't they? This team looks fired up and ready to play. It's the marquee game of opening weekend, and off we go on a Sunday night on EA Sports. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. And trotting out there, their tall quarterback standing at 6'5". They come up in an offset eye. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and it'll make it a second down. And a very good offensive unit here. One of the reasons they're so good is running back Mark Ingram. It took a little while for him to find his footing when he got into the league, but the former Heisman Trophy winner has it now and is really upped his pass receiving potential. A nice player. They'll look to throw. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And now a look at the defense for the Colts. Randy Gregory entered the league with people excited about his pass rushing skills. They continue to stay excited about his potential. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. They'll set up a throw. And he finds a man, it's Olsen. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They'll look to throw. And Olsen over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. Well, he's talking about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. So the offense has it first and ten. Give to Henry. And some room to work. And he's brought down. Ten yards on the pick up there. And it'll be first down Saints. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills? And it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick, 
and shifty. Can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice gain. They keep it with Henry on first down. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. All right, I'm doing my rudimentary math here. That's his third catch here in the first quarter. I don't know if it's just game plan or he's just finding his way open. And maybe a little of both. And this will be play number eight of the opening drive. It's third and short. Try to run for the first with Henry. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. All right, here we go. Lumber, lumber. They'll run for the first time with Mark Ingram. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And a loose football. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And without a doubt, not the way they pictured that opening drive unfolded. No, they were making progress. They weren't exactly in high gear, but they, they were making a few yards along the way. And now that they've coughed it up, you got to go back to the sidelines and regroup a little bit. And as the referee is under the hood, and we're seeing this as well, he's watching the knee, isn't he? Similar to a bang-bang play in baseball where you're listening to the sound of the ball hitting the glove at first base while watching the runner's foot hit the base. Which one came first? Did the knee hit the ground, or did the ball come loose? Third down and three. The pitch to Henry, spinning past him. And he takes it inside the 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. I remember watching Derrick Henry come out of Alabama and sitting with some scouts, and one of the debate points with him was, while at Bama, how often did he have to deal with contact near the line of scrimmage? They were so good up front that he often got to the second level pretty easily. I think he's starting to answer those questions with runs like that. He's a physical, physical guy. Goal line offense, something they've really been emphasizing in practice lately. Now they have a chance here to put all that hard work to use. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. So that run gets him about halfway home. Yeah, it's now second and goal. The end zone beckons. It looms. They can do whatever they want. Full playbook. Run it again, or they can go play action and try to put it in that way. Ball spotted at the four. It's second and goal. Derrick Henry. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. Derrick Henry taking it in from two yards out. And the Saints have taken the early lead. 
was a case of practice making perfect. Goal line offense had been their focus while prepping for this one. Almost as if you go back to training camp, isn't it? You strip it bare, you figure out what you need to make something work, work on it all week long, and get it done. That's got to feel great for them. And it's good as the Saints have a 7 to nothing lead. So that drive, four plays. And it's the rookie Derrick Henry that polishes it off with a touchdown run. Ball upright on the tee, and the Saints kick team booms it away. This will be taken in at the one. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the Stanford man. It's Andrew Luck. I love everything about Andrew Luck's game, but I also love his worldliness. Some of his formative years were spent growing up outside of the United States. And I think that that's helped him when he came back because now he's seen the world. I think that helped him mature a little bit as well. Now a carry here for Terrence West. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And a lot of the weight of this offense falls on the shoulders of the running back. That's because the offense knows if they give him any openings, any opportunities, he could turn it into a big play at any time. Second down following the run. They'll run again here with West. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. But well, we just saw the recipe for success right there. Big body, strong, agile, playing with great leverage and hands. Not really able to be blocked on that play. Close things down inside. The Saints with an extra defensive back here on third on the field. Could they blitz? Throwing on third down. Luck. And this is going to be incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. And it's fourth down. So on fourth down, the Colts will turn it over to Pat McAfee to punt this one away. I can hear the sigh of relief all the way up here. A dangerous throw backed up in their own territory and throwing an out route, and it got jumped, and they were fortunate it was only batted down and not intercepted. That's taken on the 25. <laughs> well, it wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. And a look here at the Colts' defense. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big-time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. <laughs> I saw you take a running start at that blocking sled. You took it down. <laughs> Bounced up like a rubber band. No, no, not at all. But you're exactly right. They are doing their job, but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back, I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. You, did, you didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed right. that. Totally missed it. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, guys. It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. And he's going to be taken down. Back across midfield, just across midfield at the 49. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sad. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> And the defense will try and pin their ears back and get pressure again here after the sack. It's third down. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. 
A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack. And on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. Off of play action. Luck backing up. He's going to look deep down the field. And it's knocked away and incomplete. And now a look at the Saints starting defense. Prince of Mukamara is a former first round quarterback who's looking to become king. So a second down incompletion now brings up third down. From the gun on third down, Luck. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Taking it to 37. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. The Colts defense, they work their way back onto the field. They forced the punt the last time, got off the field. I'm, I'm sure some of your D coordinators through the years, you, you liked when you heard those words, get off the field. Oh, there's no doubt Maybe you didn't it. like it when you heard those words. <laughs> it depended on when they were yelling them. But in this situation, absolutely perfect. Get off the field, force a punt, let the offense take over and do their thing, and it resulted in a field goal. Now we'll see if they can do that again. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL. And a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses. And now we're seeing it in the NFL, those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. On second down, here's Henry. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And he's gonna get to the 31, enough for the first down. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. So one quarter in the books here on our first Sunday night telecast of the year. 7-0 is our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. The NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Head & Shoulders. Shoulders were made for greatness, not dandruff. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Saints football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. 
Now a handoff to Henry. He'll get about six there as he takes this one down to the 24-yard line. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They'll come out in the pistol. Again, it's Henry. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. A three-yard pickup on second and four. Now they'll need to convert here on third and a little more than a yard. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball. And that way, you often control the game. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. This is Ingram on first and 10. Able to fight for about four yards there to the 13. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You set up very well for the rest of the drive. Looking to throw. That's going to be caught at the 10 yard line. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude. But I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. And a busy night for Henry continues. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Not only was that a terrific play, but that loss of yardage they created this close to their own goal line, that gives them a little breathing room now as they move them back. And they're breathing fire a little bit right now, aren't they? A lot of confidence being shown by them at this point of the game. Surveying the field. And he'll be hit from behind and taken down. Henry Anderson in there to get him for his second sack of the night. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. So now on fourth down, Sean Payton's going to turn it over to the field goal unit. And his kick is indeed good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy, but you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. Fielded about a yard deep. Oh, he shifts past him. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20. Call it the 21-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for him throughout the game, and that three and out of nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Sheldon Rankins continuing to fight downfield. The big tackle gets him for a loss of 11. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start.
And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They come up in an offset eye. Here's West. He finds some open field here. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. Here's Lock. As he throws there incomplete. The tight end, Max Williams, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Now West. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. And following that penalty, the offense really backed up now on third down. Luck now to throw. Looking left sideline, it's complete. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. As far as I'm concerned, Andrew Luck can do it all. I mean, he's an underrated runner, toughness in the pocket, strong and stout. But let's face it, the money, that comes from his arm. And smart, valedictorian of his high school class in Houston. Then he goes to Stanford. He's got it all. This is West. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. And here comes play number six on this drive. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. On the ground, it's West again. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two there, and it's third down. And there's another example of why they haven't scored any points so far. I think it's time to abandon the run game, spread things out, and go to the air. It certainly can't be any worse than what they've done so far. Out of the gun, Rock. Man open right side, it's Rodgers. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to three. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Here's the punter McAfee to kick it away. Set to return, this is Brandon Cooks. And he'll take it back to about the 19 yard line. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. 
And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about right, the three point the kicker. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. They'll set up a throw. And caught left side, Olsen. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. They'll drop the throw. He's got time in the pocket. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he's brought down after a good game. A very solid gain of 27. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Back to throw now on first down. He gets it to Thomas. Slips past him. Where'd he go? And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. They'll get 19 yards there. And that leads to New Orleans first down. set of downs here. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to New Orleans after this. A reminder coming up at this and every halftime this season, we'll be checking in with Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of our first half. LR, that's my man. That's your guy. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. On first down, he'll drop to throw toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was trying to hit Thomas that time. That'll bring up second down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Henry Anderson in there to get him again. The third time he sacked him here tonight. Partner, I know the ball security is preached like crazy. But every now and then, you've got to know when to get rid of the football and save a little bit of yardage if you're a quarterback. Because now, if you're the offensive coordinator, what does it do ver if it was third and 10 versus third and much longer as it is now? Yeah, it changes everything in terms of play calling and the pressure you might expect to face on the very next down. Had to throw the ball away and save the yardage. He didn't get it done. And some secondary help here for the defense and the nickel on third and long. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And to the tight end, Olsen, right side. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. 
And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. And the Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Second down now after the pass completion. On second down, here's Love. It's caught on the right side, Williams. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On first down, Love. On the right side, it's Hilton with a catch. A gain of six there on first. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Watch left, watch left, watch left. Stop right there, stop right there. They'll come out in the pistol. Throwing again is locked. Throw right side, complete to Williams. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Completed pass on second down. Now it's third down as the defense looks for the stop. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Luck looks to throw on third and one. And he's got it. Got his man on the end route. Complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Luck throwing again. This will be caught at about the five. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Again, Luck. He hits West underneath. Give him two yards on that play, and that is going to set up third and goal. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll try to pound it in with West. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. And his kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. 
So a field goal here. They're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. So we've reached halftime here in our initial Sunday night telecast of the new season as we send you over to our headquarters in Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. Both teams have arguably played well enough to be leading at this point, but you see the score and realize this one may very well come down to the wire. All right, let's do this. Here's the first half highlights. Saints with the ball midway through one. Thomas is going to make the catch, but fumble here. Offense on the field now after the fumble. Henry is going to stay up the middle, and he'll go in for a score. That puts them up by a touchdown. Saints have it at the 40 with plenty of pressure this half, and another sack. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. the second. Defense will win the battle and get the sack. This one ends up as a loss of 11. So that'll do it for us at the EA Sports Studio. We're going back under the lights for the second half of this Sunday night matchup. This is fielded at the goal line. <laughs> and he'll take it past the 25 and up.